Bismillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfir wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'malina man yahdihi allahu falamudillalah wa man yudlil falahadiyalah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh We're here today on the Tajweed class this is our fourth lesson. That is after we did the introduction from Jamzuri, Tuhfat al-Atfal. Then we did the 10 issues or the 10 fundamentals that everyone needs to know. And then after that, we covered a few basics with regards to tilawa wa al qiraa and those types of things. And now we're here starting the fourth lesson and it's going to deal directly and strictly with the text. So let's go right ahead and jump into it. <coughs> The text, again, it says, the next chapter, after we, we, the first chapter of this text is called Ahkam, Ahkam, Noon, Asakina, Watanween. Okay, now we're going to go through this piece by piece. This is the title of the first chapter. Okay? Ahkam is the plural of the word hukum. It's the plural of hukum. A hukum is a rule. Okay? Regulation. So ahkam would mean the rules of noon. Noon is the letter that is ma'roof. A letter from amongst the letters of the Arabic alphabet that start off with alif, and end off with, depending on where you go, it might end off with ya, yeah, you know, or it might end off with ghain if you do an abjadiyya. Abjadiyya is abjad, hawaz, huttiya, kaliman, sa'fas, qurishat, thakhid, dadid. So it ends with ghain. If you do alif, un ba, un ta, un tha, un jim, un ha, un kha, dadal, raza, sin, shin, sad, dad, ta, da, ayn, ghain, fa, qaf, kaf, lam, mim, noon, ha, wa, ya, then it ends off with ya. So the important thing here is that noon is that letter that is well known, very simple, well known as a letter of the alphabet, okay? It comes from the word kalman, okay? From kalman, it's the last letter in that when we do the abjadiyya, the noon, okay? The next one is asakina. This word asakina, if we break it down, we have alif and lam. Alif and lam mean the. That means what it means. Alif and lam mean the. That's all it means. Here. The rest of the word is from the root word, sin, kaf, noon, which means sekana, meaning he resided. It means here to reside. Why does it mean to reside? Because aslan, this word means to sit still, to be at rest. So, uh, be at rest, I should say. To have no movement. So, somebody says sekana because at nighttime, that's where they rest. That's where they reside. That's what you know here in Brooklyn or in New York, we say, where you rest? Where I rest at, I second, I reside, a skunu, you know what I'm saying? At a particular place. That's what it literally means. The first place we see this in the Quran, Allah says, Ya Adam skun anta wa zawjuka. Or Ya Adam skun. Skun here means reside, be there. Anta wa zawjuka al jannah. You and your wife reside, sit still in jannah. That's the first place we see that word. If we read from Al-Fatiha through Baqarah, first place, the first place we see that word is in that ayah. As a terminology, it means, the, it is the absence, the absence of a vowel sound over or in with regards or dealing with a particular Letter. Okay? So, what it means, and I don't know about the spelling of absence. Maybe it's with a C or something like that. I don't want to get into that. We do it the old school way. Spelling don't count. If you understand the point, then we're good. All right? So, here, when we're talking about noon and sakina together. Now, we did them individually. Now, we're talking about the noon that has no... Let's go right here. The noon that has no vowel sound over it. Okay? 
No vowel sound, no movement. It's not saying na, ni, nu. It's not saying anything. That's what we're referring to here. Now, a sign, the sign, to show that a letter is nun sakina is this. I'll show you. <coughs> this is the sign showing, or alamat, alama for nun sakina. This right here. Can you see that pretty good? Okay, that is the sign over a letter to show that it is noon sakina. Sometimes when you're writing freehand, you'll see this as a sign that that letter is sakin. What does this mean? This, this sign that you'll see in the Quran, many different places, is actually from kha, the letter kha. But what has been taken away? The tail has been cut, and the diacritical mark has been taken away. So the only thing you're left with is this part of it. Now, why do they use the letter kha as a representation, a representation, a sign that this letter is second? Okay, so we say second, like that. Or this number five, this is the number five in Arabic also. The reason why they use kha, because it means khalin, it means the absence, void, khali, you know, khalaw fil ard, you know, this was emptiness, you know, khalaw ila shayateenihim, they were alone with their shayateen, Allah says in the Quran. So here it is, khalin means the absence of, or void of. So instead of writing this over the letter, they just write the kha without anything on it. And that's what you have as a sign. And the person who's studying tajweed, this is regards to the Qur'an, so he has to know that when he sees it in the Mus'haf. Okay? So, moving right along. And then the five, the number five, like I said, this little thing right here, it means number five. And it's easy to write, because people, when they're writing, um, if I say kuntu, for example, kun tu, someone would write it like that. Other person would write it like this. They would say kun, and they would do a, a circle around it like that. And that this sign here is a sukun, this sign here is a sukun. Both of them are representation of a sukun or the absence of a vowel sound there, and both are acceptable. Okay? Do I have any questions about that? Moving right along. And this is a very basic class that we want you guys to have, but there are certain things that you cannot go past too fastly. Some people might say, well, let's just translate the title of this section and move on. That's not how it's dealt with when you're starting to learn this, this science. What you're dealing with as you're learning, remember, you're learning how to recite Qur'an, the rules of reciting. So in that, you need to know what these terms mean. Okay, you have vocabulary that you're learning and how to recognize them when you see them. So that's what we're doing here. Next we have here, what tanwini? Wa means and. Very simple word. Everybody's familiar with that. Every time you say assalamu alaikum, you respond by saying wa alaikum assalam. Wa and upon you. It's the source of peace and perfection. Okay? So here we have that. We just go here like this. The next word here is a tanween. Again, we have alif wal lam. Alif wal lam means what? It means the. Okay, the or the. It's the before vowel, it's the before the rest of the consonants, okay? The rest of the word is tanween, okay? Tanween is in actuality two things. It is the form, what we call tafi'il, that's the form of the word right here, where you have a ta in front of the word and a ya in the middle of the first and second radical. What are we, oh, we call root. The root is the fa, the ayn, and the lam of the word. In between that, we have a ta and a ya. So if we take away the ta and the ya, the letters that are left off is the noon, wow, and noon. Wow, look at that, subhanAllah. So this tanween means noon. Okay, noon. What does it actually mean? It means the sound of noon. As opposed to noon a second, Sakina is the actual noon written. Like I said, the letter that is ma'roof. Here what is meant is the sound that noon makes without actually writing the letter noon down. 
Does that make sense? 